Welcome to Oxygen Not Included. My name is Nilos. This is the stream recap of day five of streaming and it was yet another very productive day. So we are, um, a lot of things has happened. Let's just go uh, through some of the small ones before we dig into some of the big and maybe more interesting things. So what we did was we've actually been cleaning out this area here. This was a lot of polluted water that we just dumped down here. Unfortunately, there was, oh, well, the great thing was there was a lot of ice. The bad thing was when you dump hot water on ice, it melts. And that means we just filled up this with water sort of randomly. Not exactly ideal, but um, yeah, that's how it is. We still have some reservoirs here with relatively cold water. This one has heated up uh, over time. Uh, we have more water. We have also this lots of pure water so water doesn't seem to be an issue anytime soon and cooling we are just gradually extracting the cooling out of this so that was a lot of work with uh, polluted water just messing around with it just letting it flow through the base and uh, the consequence is also that we are nope we are not having any issues with slime lung because uh, that that just that just works right this is a lot of polluted water oxygen but as soon as it gets converted onto normal oxygen it just ceases to be polluted and the slime lung just disappears over time. So I'm really not too worried about it. Also, our glossy Draco that we built some time ago is looking amazing in my opinion. I mean, if we look at the gas overlay, well, that's not a gas overlay, that's a gas overlay. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's pretty much all the time they're up here, they're in hydrogen, so that's when their scales are growing. We only have glossy Dracos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a bit much. Uh, so they're not probably not breeding. I probably should build another one if we look at our Stuff over here 3200 plastic. I've only used like 200 plastic maybe a bit more but But that's not very much. I mean 3200 plastic without tapping into oil is amazing and once we get it up and running, I think they're just they're producing right so I, this is probably going to be my main plastic source. I would actually like to have another one here. I think I can optimize this design a bit, but this works. Uh, so not really much reason to do much about in terms of, uh, of of optimizing. Let's look at the size of this. This is 82 tiles, so I could actually make it 82 plus 12. That's uh, 94. So I could actually do that, and, and that would actually make it... Uh, make it more hydrogen in here, which means more time spent hydrogening. Actually, that also could make some spikes down. Well, anyway, that's that's beside the point. That's something we can we can deal with. Uh, we've added a few more dupes. We now have 14 dupes. That means I had to make another mess hall for them. That is a horrible mess hall. Who built this crap? That doesn't look great. I'm going to take this out. Who wants that kind of abstract art? We... Oh. I guess we have someone new doing art around here. Uh, I think I'll just uh, look at that. Where do we have decorating here? And Smeagol? Is it? Is it Smeagol? Is it Smeagol? Creativity five. Well, Gareth is creativity nine. Okay. And what about the elder? Creativity five. You know what? I'll just do this. I don't want them to build bad stuff. We want Gareth to build it. Anyway, um, and then we, some time ago, we tapped all of this. We are having issues with our coal. It's very difficult for us to keep up the coal. So uh, I had to sort of go on foraging exploration out here. We've been going all the way down there to get some more. Just to get, just to get this and and now there's a bit more down here, which I also, also think is important for us to get. Let's see. That's the coal, so I just go straight through it. Wow, now we get down to the interesting things here. And that part. Then I'll just uh, mark this as high priority, don't care. That means they just get some coal. And you can also see how far we dug down. This is the frozen core of the planet. There is an interesting thing here. If this was a volcano, that would be just tons and tons of fun. But we'll uh, we'll dig into that. So we built this part. I know this loop is still pretty horrible, but I never really had time to fix it. This one is erupting very soon, 1.5. And this is uh, in due time because we've used all of the natural gas we had. So yeah, we need it. Don't look at that. We'll get back to that. 
Natural gas, very, very simple setup here. Just built some natural gas. I don't like that. Wow, 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 wow. The natural gas here is three times 800. And I put it up some, put it on the heavy water wire, link the heavy water wire from the, to the production side of our plants. Put it into two transformers so they each can draw 1000 out. And then the last 400 goes in here. I've set this one up to be rather aggressive that it starts early, which at the time was a good idea, but now it's probably not the best idea. So we're kind of running out of oil, of coal. We are totally run out of natural gas. Yeah, that's um, <clears throat> that's something. So we are not getting as much. What about our, but we do have a ton of uh, liquid here. So that's good, that's good actually. And that's working. Uh, so that's look some of the main things. We've also worked on our ranching. We were in very big trouble here. There was actually just one left and we had some eggs and those eggs were not hatching properly because they were just, um, yeah, they were not viable because they'd been stored in boxes for too long. This one, do you have, you have some sage eggs, okay. It would be nice if this one got incubated a bit faster. Viability 51, see the viability is pretty miserable here. I think it's a waste of time. And this doesn't change. Yeah. So we have, how many do we have? Let's go to the overlay. We have five here, so this is full. This one is two. And basically what I'm saying this one is, if it's more than five, it puts the eggs over here. They will be incubated. And once they go over here in this little, this is also a wrench. It is not a wrench, it should be a wrench, uh, but it still works. It has this one that basically says, if it's more than zero, out wrangle. So it get wrangled and they get put out here. It's pretty simple. And that means that's how it goes. So we have five plus six, seven, eight, and that old buddy up here, nine. You're old, right? No, you're not, you're actually not old. Uh, you're kind of elderly. Okay, so let's, um, we, we now have nine, so this is increasing, increasing, that's great. And it's gonna take a bit of time, but um, it, it will, it will work. And this will produce some coal. I don't know how much, I do have a feeling that is not as much as I, I'd like it to be. So now comes the bigger part. We have made a big cooling loop here. <clears throat> Basically, this is what you see flowing here. And it flows all the way through the base here using normal pipes, not radiant pipes, normal pipes, because I wanted to dissipate some heat everywhere, but not, or absorb some heat everywhere, but not, uh, so this, what we have here is, now it's going up to 21 degrees. It comes in here at this loop from down here at minus seven degrees, that's lovely. And when it goes by this sensor, it checks if it's over 20 degrees. If it's 20 degrees, then it sends it that way, just to be put in. If it's less than 20 degrees, it goes another cycle to absorb more heat. And it works flawlessly, I'd say, this part. So that means it drops it down here. Where does the new water come in? That's the next part. Where is that going to get to? Oh, this came from up here. Yeah. So this works and this is always like second priority. On it. Coming in. And this one comes in here minus, it's not that that cold. And this is where the magic happens, right? This is what we built. We built a thermo aqua tuner. Let's look at the overlay. This takes 1200 and a steam turbine that produces 850. So it's a deficit here. This one is never running and that one is never running. These were built to vacuum out all the from this one make it into a vacuum before we've got steam in this one was big to make a vacuum because on the heat overlay this is going to be very hot and i don't want this one to be in contact right out here because it's going to dissipate so much heat like 135 degrees so if this one is a vacuum there is no heat dissipation in here look at these they're right next to each other this is 24 degrees this is i think this one 26 degrees this one 150 35. So I built this vacuum in here and of course that means I need to leave the gas pump in and it's always trying to empty But of course, it's gonna keep there. This one was brought out here And it actually still has steam in it like very hot steam and brought out here Before and so what this one does let's work through this. This is gonna be a bit complicated You can see that now it's a closed loop close cooling loop here uh, Yeah, it's a closed cooling loop 
for two reasons. It is not drawing in anything. This one has, that means the cooling loop up here is happy. It doesn't need to get new water in. Therefore, it doesn't demand anything. That means uh, it just goes in a closed loop. So what this one does is it starts here. It gets water in from, now I'm taking the hot water in 24 degrees. I probably shouldn't do that generally because I'm just using a lot of power on this. So it goes in into a liquid reservoir. The liquid reservoir serves the purpose of basically evening out the water. So this means that it can run for a longer time. If I didn't have a liquid reservoir, it would cool down the water and then it would kind of get stuck. If I have a big reservoir here, then it takes the cool water comes in and you can see how slowly this temperature changes, which is a good thing because when the new water is being demanded, it just flows through. So this one goes in, this is uh, this bridge is here to tell the direction, goes into an aqua tuner. No, a, go into a, what's it called? It, this one's called a thermal sensor basically saying, if it's less than zero degrees, then it actually go, the, we turn off the tepidizer. Uh, it's still not a tepidizer, it's an aqua tuner because this one is cooling things by 14 degrees. And I don't want to cool things that are already zero degrees we're using blue reduction so that can go about to minus 20. that means it goes here tries to go into the aqua tuna cannot so it has to continue and jump over and then continue on this but so now this one just goes through it still serves as for off here for cooling the steam engine because the steam engine can get hot but it doesn't actually get hot it's actually really well cooled here and then it just goes around it doesn't really do much but it doesn't so it doesn't take any power at this point so uh, maybe that one takes a bit of power. Nope. And this one, this valve is simply there to set the direction. Basically, when you get in here, if I was putting it from this one to that one, it really wouldn't be knowing where it should go. So, uh, because that was an output and this is an input, so it would actually assume that it goes from the output into the input. And I want it to go from the input into the output and merge back in here. So right now, we are slowly cooling this one and this is now minus 1.6 degrees, which means this is not working. So the way I could force it to work is by saying, you know, and this is this is just showing how well the space is being cooled. Look how much, how well it's cooled. The pipe here is now 18 degrees running through here. Out here it's 14.7 degrees. It's just flowing through and just cooling things off. 18 degrees. And now we have set this one to 15. I don't want basically the base to be 15, but I wanted this. So now what happens is it takes the water that we've cooled here. This is now coming here, minus 6.6 .6 degrees. It goes in here and then it comes out. And then it also draws in more hot water, 24.5, which is then going to, it's, it's only going in when every bubble going out means one bubble going in. And you can see here, the temperature is not it's not directly the 24.4 I'm getting in. It has to go through the liquid reservoir, which then evens out the temperature. And that means it's not it now coming out as 4.5. So that means basically by having this liquid reservoir, you kind of offer some heat and some cold, which I think is a really nice thing. So now it works. And you can see it here. This is working. If you look at the inputs and outputs, it goes in at 6.3, comes out as minus eight degrees. And that's nice. So the minus eight degrees is currently being pumped directly into the base. Is that, is that actually okay? There would be a point to actually getting it in here first. Whoop. I don't know. Did not see what that was. Just every time you hear that, you just have to press space to save it. And this one is, it's not really working very well at this point because I'm sim this one was not running for a while. Uh, it goes in, takes this and I put some ethanol in here so that it would be, uh, if this one was heating up, it turns out it's not really heating up very much. And I can't really get this on, uh, get this up. What I should probably do is maybe make three aqua tuners and two steam turbines. It's just consuming a lot of power. And at this point, I really don't need the, need this kind of, uh, of cooling in the base. This is actually providing more cooling that I need. Uh, basically, this temperature, this water here is the big reservoir up here. And gradually this one will decrease because I'm taking the 24 degree water in. But what I'm 
clearing out here. In this case, it's 20 degrees. But it's going to be a lot less. So let's uh, walk through this. If we see the it's, mine, it's one degree coming in. And then gradually, these are actually radiant pipes. I chose to put radiant pipes here. Ah! I need to know what's going on. So these are still running hot. But if you just look at it, how isolated this heating this hotness is because it's just it's just being so actively cooled and that means the whole base is starting to be more green and not very orange anywhere i like it i like it especially with where we need it and i can just if i need to get it somewhere else i can just take this long pipe here of cooling and bring it wherever i want for example we have some hotness down here that would also be probably be a good idea to bring some coldness around here Ah, I didn't get it fast enough. Damn it, where are you? There's someone suffocating. I wonder if it's down here. It's just because that because I, the fact that dupes are suffocating is not a great sign. That's gonna be make me very, very sad. I'm just being really careful now. Okay, so basically what means the big thing we did was actually steam the engine is working. Now this is producing only 300. This one is taking 1200, but this is not all, all working all the time. The irony of this is, look how hot, how cold this is, look how hot this is. Maybe I'm putting too much effort into cooling this. I might. Uh, because this one really should be uh, this this cold. So I think that this one does not need to be a, a cooling pipe here. And yeah, so let's, uh, let's leave it as that. Okay, so what I'm going to do next time, I am going to definitely start tapping into, this is a cool steam vent. The problem with the cool steam vent is, well, is there a problem? I don't really know what I want. I really want some power. So maybe it's actually, I think power is the thing we want. That means it's oil production. I have a nice oil reservoir and another nice oil reservoir. And I believe oil reservoirs can be extracted from a reservoir with sufficient pressure. And I think the pressure is where we build up with uh, pumping water in. That might be something we could do, like taking this one, putting it into a cooling loop that cools some of it down to make it accessible, and then take some other one that's hot and put it in here. So basically taking the 110 degree hot water and then kind of splitting it and making it into some cold water and some, like basically running through a steam engine, then get 95 degree water in. If I can take the 95 degree water, pump it in here, that would actually be a... a uh, if, if that could work that could actually work we'll we'll, uh, we'll give it a give that a go if, if it is the way it works that's gonna be interesting this one is actually probably more likely to be uh, to be done because actually honestly this can this is nice because this will gradually melt all of this crap which is going to be lovely lots of water we don't really need a lot of water in the base because we don't use electrolyzers for these electrolyzers are not really working very much. The main source of oxygen comes from here, uh, from our polluted mobs, and it also comes from some of these. Just a bit, and we have tons and tons of, of, uh, of that. But this is our main source of oxygen, just for anyone who is wondering about that. And it's fine. High pressure? Too high pressure, but... That's going to be fine. Anyway, that's enough for us uh, this time. So um, things are really progressing very well. And I have, I'm, I'm reached further than I've ever done before. Uh, making steam engine work, making actually a cool base, having a steady with lots of lovely food. Look at how much mushroom I have. That's crazy. And uh, yeah, time to start taps. Ah, oh, I didn't get it. Damn it. And I, I was very, very close. So maybe it's you. Holding breath, it probably was you. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that, that time to wrap up. Thank you for joining. I will be streaming this again. I'm doing it three times a week on Twitch. So be sure to check out my Twitch streams and also the tutorials. There's uh, more tutorials coming. I have currently three tutorials on my YouTube channel. So do check those out. I think they're quite neat and they use this base as uh, um, the formation. Let me know in the comment section below if there's something else you want me to take a look at something you think I should be focused on in, in this space or anything like that. Thank you very much for joining. As always, stay effective.